This video is on index funds. What exactly is an index fund? An index fund is a professionally managed company. Uh, it can come in a couple of different varieties, a couple of different structures. It could actually be a mutual fund or it can come in uh, as an ETF. Let's not worry about this part right now. So how does an index fund work? Well, the index fund, uh, the company, takes money that the investors give them. And then what they do is they use that money to buy a little bit of every stock in a particular category. So each index fund specializes in a particular category. And there are many different types of categories. The important part here, though, is that regards which category that they specialize in, the way they invest the money is by buying a little bit of every stock in that category they specialize in. Let's give a couple of examples here. Let's say you have a domestic large cap index fund. So that means that this particular index fund this particular company will take the money from their investors and they're going to buy a little bit of every large company in the U.S. That's what here domestic means. Or if you have a S&P 500 index fund, what this index fund would do is they take all the money from their investors and they would go and buy a little bit of every company of all 500 companies in the S&P 500. So what's the goal of an index fund? The goal of an index fund is to match the performance of that particular category. So in this S&P 500 index fund, that company is trying to match the same return or the same performance of these 500 companies in the S&P 500. Since they're trying to match that particular category, that's why they buy a little bit of every company in that category. Because if you have every company in that category, it, it sort of automatically will match their performance or come very close. An index fund uses what is known as a passive strategy. So uh, a passive strategy means they're not trying to actively do better than the uh, category. They are, uh, the passive here refers to the fact that they just go and buy everything. It doesn't require a lot of work on their part. So how is the return of a index fund? We know that the goal of the index fund is to uh, match the performance of that category. Well, how does that return on investment uh, actually look? Well, typically, the return on investment or the performance of the index fund tends to be a little bit less than that category they're trying to match. And the reason it turns to be, it generally is a little bit less is because one, that index fund is gonna charge you a fee. They are still providing a service to you, even if they're not doing uh, that much work, they're still providing a service to you. So because they're providing service to you, they're charging you a fee. Also, since the index fund is buying and selling things, there are transactions costs. So uh, these two combined is the reason why your typical index fund will return a little less than the category that they're trying to match. So this is compared to the category they're trying to match. If you were comparing your typical index fund to your average mutual fund, 
uh, in general, the index fund will actually have a higher return on investment. And the reason for this is because the mutual fund charges a higher fee than the index fund does. The mutual fund has to do a lot more work since they're trying to beat the market. So they require more people, uh, more man hours. So what type of index funds are there? What type of categories do they try to match? There are an index fund that tries to match virtually everything. Uh, the main categories of investments is stocks or bonds. There are some index funds that they take the strategy of trying to be a balanced index fund. And once again here, the word balanced means is a balance between stocks and bonds. And there are not as many of these balanced index funds. And most of these balanced index funds, you can think of it almost as two different index funds in one. For example, if you have a balanced index fund that is 60% stocks, 40% bonds, well, those 60% stocks, they're usually trying to match it with some sort of category of stocks, maybe S&P 500. So then they'll have 60% of their investments used to buy a little bit of all 500 companies in the S&P 500, for example. And then there'll be a similar category of bonds, which they'll invest the other 40% in. So that's how you can kind of think of a balanced index fund as really two different index funds in one. There are some index funds that actually will charge you a lower fee if you put at least a certain amount of money into their fund. So what are these smaller categories of stocks that index funds might try to match? You might have an index fund that will try to match a particular sector or industry. So for example, you might have a technology index fund or an energy index fund, etc. Real estate, healthcare, materials. You might have an index fund that tries to match the performance of a particular country. So there are definitely index funds that just try to match China or example, just try to match the US. So this is a country index fund or a region of the, of the world. Maybe they uh, try to match several countries, like the European countries or the Asian countries. You might have an index fund that tries to match all the developed countries. These are basically the rich countries or the developing countries, the not as rich countries. And there are even index funds that try to match the performance of all the stocks in the whole world in one index fund. You might have index funds that specialize in different sizes of, country, of companies or market caps. So you might have uh, a large cap domestic index fund. So that would be a, uh, an index fund that invests all their money uh, a little bit in every single large company here in the US. Same with medium and small. You might have index funds that match strategies. In general, there are a index fund that tries to match every possible category you can think of. And it's similar with bonds. There are index funds that match or try to match every single different category of bonds that there are. So what exactly are the benefits of investing in an index fund? If you compare this to investing in individual stocks yourself, putting your money in an index fund automatically means you're, you're highly diversified, at least compared to if you just bought individual stocks. Once again, diversification means owning a lot of different things. And if you own a lot of different things, 
the results are going to be less volatile, less ups and less downs. Another benefit of investing in an index fund is part of what you're paying for is someone else to manage this portion of your money for you. An index fund also has a very low expense ratio. This is the fees that they charge you. They charge you very low fees. And compared to, say, buying individual bonds, buying an index fund of bonds will be much more liquid. Liquid here is talking about how easy it is to turn that money or turn that thing back into cash. If you own individual bonds, there's usually a fee, a pretty big fee you have to pay if you want to turn that bond into cash before the, the date that that bond matures. If you own an index fund, you can just sell those pieces of the index fund on the market pretty easily. Pretty low cost. So I mentioned the fees that the index fund charges. They charge a relatively low fee compared to mutual funds. In the other video, I mentioned that mutual funds charge between 0.5% and 1% on average. And then an index fund charges less at 0.2 to 0.5%. And that's because index funds are passive, a passive fund. They're not trying to beat the market so that they can, uh, they can therefore have uh, fewer people employed if all they're doing is just buying a little bit of every single company. They don't have to have people employed to do research. So therefore, they can charge you a lower fee and still make money. This is the average right here. It will be higher if you're investing in an index fund that specializes in something uh, uh, smaller. If you have an index fund that specializes in something with a lot more companies, such as small caps, then there's going to be higher transaction costs. If they have to buy more companies and sell more companies, then those fees will be a little bit higher. The fees that they have to pay themselves will be higher, so therefore they'll charge you a higher fee. If you have an index fund that invests in other countries, there's usually additional fees that they have to pay to invest in a different company, so they'll pass those along to you in a higher expense ratio than this. One quick aside that I want to talk about is something called ETFs or exchange traded funds. Most ETFs or ETF is a, a, a structure that the company puts around themselves. Most ETFs are index funds, but the two words are not technically the same. You can have an index fund that is built as a passive mutual fund, or you can have an index fund built as an ETF. One example of the difference between this ETF build and the mutual fund build for an index fund is that mutual funds, when you're buying into a mutual fund, even if it's an index fund, that's, a, that's built on a mutual fund structure, you're technically buying in and selling out of it at the end of the day. This is no matter what time of day you put in the order to buy it, technically it's actually bought and sold at the end of the day and at the end of the day prices. On the other hand, an ETF structure, uh, those shares are bought and sold throughout the day not just at the end. In general, there are distinctions. There are differences between an ETF structure for index funds and a mutual fund structure for index funds. But personally, 
uh, I don't pay that much attention to it myself. I don't feel that it is that big of a difference. Definitely not as big of a difference uh, comparing, say, a mutual, uh, an index fund built as a passive mutual fund compared to a mutual fund that is active in their management. So I will often not make too much of a distinction, although there is one. Okay, so quick summary. An index fund buys a little bit of everything in a particular category. This is because their goal is to match the performance of a particular category. There are mutual funds that basically match every type of investment strategy, every sort of sector, every sort of size, every sort of variety that there is out there. By buying into mutual funds, you become you have a high amount of diversification at a low expense ratio. 